Sometimes I wonder if I should actually be repeating things that I've done and then I remind myself that this is really a process of going through the build and so I shouldn't really try to leave out anything. There we go. These are frames C through 7. Uh, again, we've made three copies of each one on the printer and produced the cutouts so again, um, a small number of nine, um, the majority are nine and a half, and then the cross chalk, oops, and then the cross chalks or the floors are all done on ten. Again, following the advice that um, I've had so long, um, I keep this chart to make sure I know where I am. And all the, the key information, um, forward and aft frames, where they go, and whether there's a floor or cross chalk um, on that particular frame. And then in case I get confused, I come back to this little note that I wrote to myself. Um, I, again, just trying to make sure I don't make mistakes. I've highlighted the frames in blue. Um, as you'll see, there are three sweeper ports, sweep ports that you need to make accommodation for um, one, two and the start of a third there's the gun port and the sill frame on the top follows the same as these three here um, goes all the way up to the gun the other thing I've done on the model is to put uh, two cross supports um, again just to strengthen strengthen the hull and to eliminate the possibility of errors. Out we go to the back or dirty shop that I have in the back um, and cutting out the pieces using both the scroll saw and I also use my proxon band saw because I find it very useful. Once all the pieces are complete um, back into the inner shop where I keep my um, spiral sander hook it up to a vacuum cleaner so it's relatively clean on the inside shop um, and you will find that not all the pieces will actually be able to be done on the sander I do result um, I do go to hand sanding for some of the smaller pieces then finally we assemble everything and of course you need to check those against the sheets the extra sheet that we left out which we use to assemble the pieces when we stick them. The only frame that is going to have a, a, a change is the aft um, where the top timber on frame C um, shifts forward. So again we just need to look at the, the plan uh, to make sure we get that right. And we've been through this a few times so that's a relatively simple process. So let's get back into the inner shop and start assembling these frames using chocks wherever, uh, wherever possible. There we go. Pull it off. Yeah, right. This one now. Take that one off. Alright, 
taking this one off. Alright. You and Papa made this? Hold it. Yeah, hold it. Well, you can always get a helper when you're looking for one. This is Ollie, my trainee. Say hi, Ollie. Hi. <laughs> All the frames have now been built. Um, it was relatively <laughs> uneventful. And so as Greg and David said, um, as we build more and more of these frames, they really do get easier as time goes on. The only two frames that are slightly different are C, which you've been through, um, which is pushed forward. Um, and again, relatively straightforward and the floor which doesn't use a chalk um, to join the top timber to the frame and so we're going to do the installation using the time time elapse because we've been through this a few times um, and if anything of interest comes up i'll stop and um, we can go through it in detail so here we go the second sweep port is located right after the gun port so having established the line we put an 8 inch block um, because the size of the sweep port is 8 inch square. We have now completed uh, frames F and D, putting the spacers on them, 7 inches. And again, just to remind you, 9 inches below the line, 7 inches above the line, and the spacers are 7 inches thick. Certainly every batch of frames I try to square both the start and the end frames. Um, I didn't do that in this case and I put it on and found there was a slight variance. So we have lined this one up and it's 0 0.073 and when we line this one up it's 0 0.090. So that's slightly off, <coughs> but not too bad. As the build progresses, we get to understand why it's so important that the frames uh, be square. Because remember, we're building from the front wing back, from the back wing front. 
And so now that we've got this one squared out, I'm just going to again double check and see that that one is absolutely square on. And for very good reason, that when they eventually do come together, they must fit perfectly, very much in the same way as we've lined up the frames, as we've built from both ends. And so, and we just double check this again. And it's um, as perfect as it's gonna get. I decided to bring my bench top sander into the shop so I put a little top on this and um, gives me another table to work on I can also take this off and put the model on, on it and the only reason I'm doing this is that I can hook up the vacuum system to the Veritas um, vacuum gates that I have around the shop As was pointed out in the book, um, the easiest time to cut the mortises is in fact either when the frames are flat or when they are mounted and you have full access to the frame. So I decided to try my first attempt at cutting the mortises on the frame and we did it both here on the port and starboard side and we'll find out how good this came out when we put um, the next frame on. I was starting to have a creeping error. Um, and in fact, the, the frame was three to four inches too far back. Um, and I, I couldn't figure out where this error was coming from. When you look at the framing plan ZEZ4691, down at the bottom you'll clearly see that this frame is shifted forward. But there's no reference to that in the book. So this is the source of my, my error. I emailed Greg last night and he confirmed that um, in fact that there is an error in the book and that E aft should have been shifted forward. So the solution was to get the old isopropyl alcohol out, take the frames off and I'll have to rebuild um, E aft. Um, so that's where we are. Then I started to look at the plan in more detail. And if you look at the point of each of these pencils, you will see that the sill for the sweep, sweeper ports um, actually all uh, go into the frame on the right quite a bit deeper than on the left. And in fact, 
Um, Greg makes mention of this in the email to me. Um, so I missed that, and certainly the book missed that. Um, and I'm not sure I can go and take all of these frames out now, because that would mean going all the way back to J, and I really don't feel like going back there now. Each of these pencil points shows a shifted timber, um, certainly on my plan of the thorn. Um, at this point in time, there's no way I'm going to go back and um, try and change the ones that are there because with my recent adjustment, I will have got the frames lining back up. It's a good thing I told you that uh, this was going to be a relatively simple process and that I wondered if I should have uh, done a video on these frames. In fact, they've turned out to be one of the more challenging sets of frames and the most amount of rework that I had to do, um, simply because of the shifted frames that I found for my plan of the, for, um, of the thorn. Um, which is different than the instruction in the book. Um, so they're all in now. Um, I still have a slight squaring problem, which I'm going to deal with um, as I add frames. It's difficult to deal with the squaring problems when you have the gun port um, in place because it changes the spacing. Um, I'm not going to bother to go through the sanding of the frames, we've done that a few times. Um, so I think this has taken about three weeks longer than I thought it was really just trying to find out um, where the error was coming from and then finding the solution. So we we'll see you next video.